We're now going to briefly take a look at a few threats to water quality and then see how trees can address these issues. There are two types of pollution that we're concerned with, and the first is point source pollution. And that's a single identifiable source of pollution that's discharged into the atmosphere. Um, and many sources, I'm sorry, many point sources of pollution are related to industrial waste, such as smokestacks, um, and sewage, and we have a few additional listed here. The other type is non-point source pollution, which is often more difficult to identify. Um, the source is often more diffuse in nature, and it's usually the result of runoff. Um, agriculture is a major offender because pesticides, fertilizers, and animal waste contribute to non-point source pollution. Runoff from, no, I'm sorry, runoff from non-permeable surfaces like roads, parking lots, and our roofs is also considered non-point source pollution. Floods, um, also like those that we've experienced recently, um, can result in non-point source pollution as well. So the question is, how can growing native effectively battle pollution and improve water quality? And the answer is trees. Um, trees are really crucial to the health of the Potomac River, particularly when they're a part of healthy streamside forests. First and foremost, trees filter runoff before it enters our waterways. And their roots work as a filtration system and can remove many of the pollutants that we find in runoff. They reduce soil erosion, um, which protects riverbanks and prevents harmful sediment from entering the river. They also regulate both air and water temperatures. Um, a tree that provides shade on a riverbank will keep the water cooler, preventing the growth of harmful bacteria and algae, um, and creating ideal temperatures for fish and other river life. They also filter the air we breathe by taking in carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. And finally, um, trees provide food and shelter for native wildlife that depend on them. So while there are millions of different types of trees found in the Potomac watershed, many of which are not native, the Growing Native Project only collects seeds from native trees. An ecosystem must maintain a delicate balance to remain healthy. And all species that are native to an ecosystem play a unique role um, and by introducing a species that does not belong, you can offset the entire balance and negatively affect the health of that ecosystem. Native species are also the best suited to face local challenges. They are adapted to soil conditions, climate, and rainfall. Um, they've developed defenses against local diseases and pests. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they provide food and shelter for native wildlife. Um, and as a result of all of these factors, they tend to require less maintenance than a tree that's not native to the area, and they don't pose a threat to other native species. So now that we have a good understanding of how growing native works, we're going to move on to the specifics of participating in the project. And there are two ways to participate, um, by holding or attending a seed collection, and by hosting a drop-off site. And we're going to look at the collection site first. So you've decided that you want to participate in Growing Native, either with a group or as an individual. Um, and the first step is going to be to choose a location for your seed collection. You can have an event anywhere within the Potomac watershed. Uh, and some popular options include school grounds, um, in a park, on a corporate campus, or even in your own neighborhood. And wherever you decide to collect, you want to make sure that you have permission or permit first um, if one is required. The Growing Native website is really an important tool because it has a lot of helpful resources, um, including permits for some parks. So the website is um, posted here. It's www.growingnative.org. Um, and what you're going to want to do is click on the drop-off and seed collection sites from the top menu. Um, and then it's going to take you to a map that looks like the one you see here. Uh, and all of these counties are clickable. So once you select your county, it's going to um, take you to a list. 
and then you'll be able to find permit information if there's any available in your area. The next step is to register your event. Um, and again, you're going to visit the website, um, and you'll see a register link in the top menu. And then from there, you're going to enter all of your information. Um, and within a few days, you'll receive all necessary materials. You'll get a package in the mail with bags and tags for collecting and labeling seeds. And you'll also receive an email with links to other necessary materials, such as liability forms, um, tracking forms for your event, um, as well as a list of native species that you'll be collecting. Um, and here we see a page that just gives you an example of what that might look like. Um, you can also find the list of desired native species in your area on the website. Every state within the watershed has a unique list that's been developed by the nursery, so be sure to consult the proper list before you begin collecting. Um, it will also help you identify seeds by providing images of the seed, leaf, and bark, as well as a written description of the tree. Um, before you begin, you'll also need to collect liability forms from each participant, um, and that form is included in the email that you receive after you register. Next, you're going to hold your event. Um, be sure to have all the necessary materials with you, including the bags, tags, and your list of native species that you're searching for. Uh, when you're uh, collecting seeds, you should only put one species in each bag and label it clearly. If you do require additional bags or tags, just contact the Conservancy and we'll get those to you right away. Um, and then once the seeds are sorted, bagged, and tagged, you're going to bring them to your nearest drop-off site. Again, you'll visit growingnative.org, and you'll select drop-off and seed collection sites from the top menu. You'll get this map again, and you're going to click on your county. Um, and again, the drop-off sites will be listed, um, and you'll find them there on the right. Finally, you'll complete the paperwork that was sent in your email, and you'll get all of that back to Potomac Conservancy. Uh, and you can either do this by email or by regular mail. And it's really essential that you complete and return all that paperwork because it enables us to track the success of the program and get your feedback so that we can make positive improvements in the future. The second volunteer opportunity that we're going to discuss is hosting a drop-off site. And anyone can really be a drop-off site coordinator, including foresters, teachers, organizations, or even individuals. All you need is a location that's accessible to the public. The first step would be to contact Potomac Conservancy to express your interest. And we will provide the necessary equipment, um, either a Growing Native kiosk or a bin with a Growing Native banner, both of which we saw in this previous slide. The option that you choose really depends on how much space you have. Um, once you register, you'll receive, again, a package in the mail that will have bags and tags, and those for, are for you to keep on hand, um, as well as an email with an instructions and necessary paperwork. As the seeds arrive, you're going to keep an eye on them to be sure that everything is sorted, bagged, and labeled correctly, and then you'll fix anything that's not done properly. You'll also use the paperwork provided to track all the seeds that come in. Um, you'll be assigned a forester whose contact information you'll receive in the email, and this person will be picking up seeds from your drop-off site throughout the season as necessary. Whenever your bin is nearly full, you'll want to reach out to that forester to schedule a pickup, and you should expect to schedule about three pickups throughout the season, um, depending on how many collections take place in your area, um, and that will include one final collection at the end of October. After your, fi your final pickup, you're going to complete your paperwork um, and then send that all back to Potomac Conservancy again so that we can track the success of the project and make any improvements in the future. So at this point, um, I would like to introduce Tim Colbreth, who is a Chesapeake watershed forester with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. And Tim is going to give us um, a behind-the-scenes look at what happens to the seeds after we collect them. 